Band of Four back together in Boston. We're a team. We're a band of four right now. February 27th, it's the real KNC. Ken Laird. Chris Curtis. Pudgy the dog, also with a uh, seat that we've purchased and put here in the pod center. He's looking nice great. We traveled across Florida to fly with his dog. No, we have to get to that. He got busted. Oh, you did? He got busted. He got popped? Got popped. Pudgy <laughs> got caught. Got what was busted. that at the end there, Chris? Did you hear that, Ken, or no? The that voice was, burp. That was a long Some... one. So Curtis got taken behind the woodshed today at 8.30. You want to explain in detail what happened on the return trip from Fort Myers. So full details, about an hour before we actually got to this on the air, I, Jerry and I were talking in the hall, and I said, he said, how was your flight home? Did Pudgy make it home okay? And I, of course said what I, I said yep and you know we got home okay but it was a little bit of pain and I told him that my dad had purchased a seat for him <laughs> why would you say I that? have no idea by the way you know what he told me off the air this is probably not for uh airing I, I look at Jerry I just I can talk to Jerry I like the man and I sat back down and I was like pit in my stomach when yeah. is this going to come up on the show oh uh, boy and so of, of course it did and i was my eloquent self and de- describing it on the air yes i w- we were out to dinner with you, you guys f- what we saw the dog with when we went out to the mexican place we saw the dog punch to sentence, dinner would you um but basically we got to the airport saturday night uh, for our return flight from boston and my wife went to the counter to exchange her paperwork which documents that Pudge is a support dog. What does your dog do for you? And Not just, a service dog, just a support a dog. A support dog. He doesn't actually have a service collar or anything mm. like that. It's just taking forever. And so eventually I walk up to the desk and she's bawling hysterically. And the dog. <laughs> my wife. Oh. And... And he's the dog's like, a he. The, the dog's a he. The Sorry, Pudge man's got a wiener. No balls. Balls. The guy's just saying, you know, this isn't the proper documentation. You need to have a, what, you know. Proper a, a, documentation. Oh, man. Oh, he's giving me the riot act. He's like, you know, you need to have the specific, what this is specifically the dog is treating you for, and you need to have the doctor's license identification number. So that little vest you got online for 10 bucks didn't do the How trick. Do you, meanwhile, I'm like, we've had this on three different flights. It's never been an issue. Why is this all of a sudden an issue? Does it cost anything normally or when you? No, it's free. Long story. Story short, Too late. our flight supposedly is about to be taking off. Of course, it was delayed. I said, "What can we do?" Like, okay, whatever. Where do we go from here? How did he how climb? did Pudgy fly back? Uh, the old man gave him his own seat oh for the flight. God. I don't know why. It doesn't bother me to have help from my dad because it's we, his we choice. Shit. We get paid shit, and the thing that, if I didn't have this career, or whatever you want to call it, this hobby, well, my interest is sports radio. I listen to sports talk radio. That's what I like to do. It also happens to be my job. I, if, I, if I wasn't in radio, which everything I've done in radio is because of my own doing. I don't have help from my daddy. That's a lie. He's never gotten any connections in radio. That's a lie. I choose to get up at 3.30 in the morning and yeah. work in radio. Courage. I could coast. I could sit at home and not work. I could do whatever, and... That's because my dad's successful. It wasn't my choice. I just happened to be lucky sperm into a wealthy family. You and Kirk. Right. You trust fuck little bitch. I would be much more frustrated at someone who was in my situation who didn't work hard, who didn't have a good job that he earned, who just sat there at his, you know, Spalding smells. I want potatoes. You'll get nothing and like it. I don't know. That's why, and I'm not going to hide from it and act like it doesn't exist. It's what it is. It is what it is. My dad's wealthy. He chooses to share it with me. I'm not ashamed about it. Curtis, shame on you. There is a little sensitivity on Kirk's part because people like to give him shit about this type of stuff. So he always likes to distance himself whenever I'm brought up when it comes to money and family. Do you know what a dick you sound like? Like You make fun of me for having money. I would never do that. How- give me a hard time. What about Curtis? <laughs> you know, yeah. It's like low hanging Curtis right. from Kirk, you're saying. Yeah, I mean, well, no, he says that to Jerry. Whenever Jerry, whenever I come up in these situations, he gets mad at Jerry for not getting mad at me like he gets mad at him. During you the sound fight. like Leona Helmsley. <laughs> and it's like, okay. And Jerry likes to present his hardworking background and past, right? He came from the, the mean streets. And I know you're a tough son of a gun, Jerry. Worked he his grew way up, up in Chelmsford, worked his way up. Yeah. Got a great work ethic from his dad, all of that. And it's all true. But I can't not, I mean, I guess I could turn it down. But why make it more difficult on myself? How hard it is just to travel home. Yeah, your wife's in a, a state. You're trying to calm the situation. The down. one thing where I could absolutely be given an advantage would be in work. I could sit next to my dad, be a loser, you know, whatever. Click a couple buttons a day and make Pick a lot more money business. than what I do. Yeah, but I I choose to do this because I gain something out of working hard and growing in an industry that I care about. He didn't want to hire you, did he? No way. I don't want to be a product of my environment. You have to read. <laughs> they already have a stapler. All right. Well, you handled yourself fine. I took a shot at your dad, too, for enabling the situation, but maybe uh, now they learned the whole circumstances. He is, but it's like, okay, I don't know. I'm not going to fight it. I, I've fought it for a while. Part of the new Chris. Could she not, sur- if, if you'd left the dog at home, 
It's impossible. The wife couldn't make the trip. It's not a battle that I'm willing to fight. I'm not going to go insane over, are we bringing the dog or not? You're not going to put the pants on. Chris, first of all, put your pants on. Be the man and say, we're not taking well, the dog. Well, this summer, we were talking about going away this summer. That's a little redundant. I'm going to go get the papers, get the papers. I said, she's like, oh, we can go to Charleston and bring Pudge or whatever. And I'm like, no, we are going away. We're doing something where it's us because it's not a vacation when you got to get up at five and take the dog out and you got to. Boy, it really is like a child. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. Like, we went to Cape Elizabeth, Maine a couple years ago. Went to a dog friendly hotel. Ooh. They had a dog menu at the hotel. Wow. It was supposed to be fully dog friendly. The pool wasn't dog friendly, which makes sense. You don't want to be swimming in a pool. You can yeah, have you Jerry's know, clothes might yeah, be in there. Jerry's clothes right there. <laughs> There's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. It just sucked. It was like I had no, there was no time to relax. It was just constant, you know, finding a, a, a hiking trail to take the dog to, finding a restaurant in Portland that's, you know, got a dog friendly. So this summer, I've laid the groundwork. We're going away for a week. Yeah, but you know what will happen. You'll be on the road without the dog, and your wife will be freaking out worrying about the dog. The dog will be with my parents. My parents are You good. can have it on one of those TVs. Oh, we'll have watch. a FaceTime. She'll <laughs> FaceTime Pudge. Absolutely, that's happened. We were in Italy. She FaceTimed Pudge. I am just not an animal person as far as pets go. I'm allergic. You know, Patio, the producer, brought the dog in. I had a terrible Friday when you guys were in Houston at the Super Bowl. So I don't understand the pet mentality. But I hear I never your had stories a from a lot of people. Oh, really? This I is never it? had one before I got Pudge. Oh. But the wife was a pet person. Yeah, wife always had a dog, and I my, my mom's Italian. We could never have pets inside the house. Everything had to be, you know, none of that. And But now, four years in with Pudge, and it's changed everything. Uh, she will not embarrass you by licking her balls in front of company. Well, we had a little bit of dog talk today. The dominant two topics in the show today were, one, the Oscars. Costumes. Of the cost of Humes. Two Mac Beggs, the uh, Texas wrestler. I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for my teammates. Who is transitioning in the in the process of it. Really good, heated, dis- not discussion, it was flat debate. Uncomfortable at times between Kirk and Jerry from 9 to about 9.45 today. Almost the whole 9 o'clock hour. A father telling his daughter, no, you can't wrestle. Pick another sport. You think, but what if she loves it? Just oh. something she's finally good at. She finally likes. And then you say to her, you can't do it because you're a girl. Because it looks weird as tradition. What if she... Sorry, that sounds what, sexist well, and prehistoric no. to me. Right. If she's not going to box, I'd say no. What if she wants to hunt? Yeah, she could shoot. Fine. Why, why trapping? She wants to trap. I'm down with trapping. Reamer was in today for a couple reasons. As you described on the show, Jerry reached out to the crew yesterday, wanted a third man in because really we hadn't had a, Mondays have been just Kirk and Jerry, but I think they got a little tired of just Kirk and Jerry last week. Yeah. The, last week was a little too much Kirk and Jerry time. If you combine Houston, this was two of the last like three, four weeks. It's just been Jerry and Kirk right. on the road. They're missing some fresh meat in they, studio. They some fresh meat. There just isn't a ton right now where you usually. During the football season, you had Brady, you had Hasselbeck, you'd replay Brady, and you had a Pats game to react to. So there really wasn't room for a third person to navigate that show. Now that we're out of football season and that the sort of Super Bowl hangover is over, I think it's time to have a third minute on Monday. So it was a good call by Jerry. No, Reamer was good today for his take on the transgender population. Dan Shaughnessy would say. You know, the transgender population. He's not a big movie guy by his own admission, but at least he was there for some of the Oscar talk. He was he was somewhere there. You ever seen any movie at all, Alex, or no? <laughs> what, from Bill Paxton? <laughs> yes. No, I have not seen any movies in. <laughs> Tried a big short throw in. That didn't really work well. <laughs> <laughs> the big short was last year. He was correct about that. Oh, it was? Kirk's just know. throwing him off with misinformation. You are fake news. Anyway, the Viola Davis was probably our best Oscar segment at 625, wouldn't you say? I uh, thought it was excellent. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't hear it live. I saw it this uh, this morning, and I'm, there was a, a great compilation of the ten most liberal moments of the Oscars last night. Mm-hmm. And I listened to it, and then we had grabbed it. Actually, worked out well for a crazy sound day. We had the sound pretty much all in this morning, and when she said that the comments about because we are the only profession that celebrates what it means to live a life yeah, the second i heard that i knew that was going to be a jerry and kirk special. that sets off when when hollywood pats itself on the back viola davis is a really good actress she won last night for fences and then gave a speech where i said this is hollywood right here the only profession that celebrates what it means to live a life <laughs> oh, i mean is that not define arrogance have you visited like a jimmy fun clinic or no uh, people hand you scripts and you pretend. You make pretend. I wasn't sure they would spend as much time on the Oscars flub because it's kind of a cliche thing that everybody in the country will be talking about. They like to dig a little deeper, as you know, on this show. But I think because it was so late at night, they wanted to keep everybody in the loop. It is the big story of the day, obviously, the, the Miss Award. There's, there's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won Best Picture. La La Land, or as Jerry calls it, L.A. Land. <laughs>
and saw L.A. and saw La La Land into Moonlight. And Piper got some love this morning. Yeah, that was spectacular. Jerry was so pissed we had to come back from break. He was one minute away from finishing the short. I know. He only got 445 in. He loved it. They get the same trophy as the guy who took a camera and and put it on a bunch of little birdies on, sure. the, on a beach. Well, was Peg Jerry's an animated guy, animated film, <laughs> especially the short films. He loves Pixar. It's almost as bad as Tim and Tim and Joe. <laughs> oh, was that good? Dropping jokes today. Tell you about the t- t- changes, as David Bowie sang. We didn't even get to a couple of them. Never had a great joke about uh, Colby Rasmus's beard. We can play here. Tampa has made as they've added former Astros outfielder Colby Rasmus. He'll be slated to start in left field. And they also reportedly signed his beard, too. He, he was a package deal. He can be an adventure. Props to Ryan Garvin, our overnight guy. He got uh, plenty of Joe and Tim in the system for their debut at spring training yesterday. And that was, uh, that was a good icebreaker at 6 a.m. today. Oh, man. I just, you can't get enough of the stone crab, the black grouper. No. One of the local delicacies, too, by we the way. We love them. They're very pricey, though. Yeah. Doug Lane just writing notes to them about octopus. Engineer producer Doug Lane, who knows everything about the sea, tells us that a problem this year has been the octopus. They tend to feast on stone crab. Back in studio for the rest of this week? I believe we're here at least through this week and for the... Um, Might be on the road for some golf events. I saw the Travelers I think the next popping time, back up. The next time we're on the road will be... NFL Combine? Marathon Monday. Coverage? Oh, Marathon Monday. Oh, the Combine. Jerry's going to go just by himself. He <laughs> loves the Combine. I've been to about six or seven Combines. I, I used to love the Combine. Really? Yeah, oh yeah, in India, yeah. To cover for, for Pittsburgh? Yeah, yeah. The guy's a stone-cold loser. Huh. I've never... I don't even know anybody that's... I, I guess the NFL guys here would, but... I'm with you... Sacks are fascist. And it's dull. You don't even get to watch the uh, events. Like, you're in... You don't watch them actually run the four. No, you have to watch off TV. I mean, they take in, like, a select few media members. You have to sign up ahead of time. They'll take in, like, 20. To just sit in the stands? You can't sit in the stands? They only let you sit in the stands. George Allen had a great saying, evaluate the evaluator. What would be the negative of having you in the stands? I don't know. They've just never opened it fully to the media. The media gets to talk to the players that are all in there. They bring them in in position groups like days at a time, and uh, you know it's just one boring interview after another. But, but, but couldn't you just have like a section of the crowd like designated you would think for the media? They, they keep that for all the uh, the football wonks. Because Shelton right. Richardson, who is a freaky defensive tackle, is up. But it's not packed. It's at Lucas Oil, right? No, it's Lucas Oil. There's just this, they just like to keep the stands empty. I don't know. It's just the way they My do it. My favorite sausage story is that he used to tell all of us that he was this huge combine guy. Mm-hmm. Loved the combine. Yeah. Knew everything about the combine. So we're down at spring training. This was when we were at spring training a little later on in the year. And um, the combine starts. And so we're like, oh, you know, sausage will watch it or whatever. And so there's like three days of combines. And we finally get to, you know. Hey, you know, who looked good? You know, what do you think? And he's like, I didn't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> what, that I have nothing to live for besides this job? After three days of selling it, that he was this huge combine walk. Uh, oh, yeah. I miss sausage. Mm. I do too. Yeah, so, what's coming? This, it, this is adult for the sports calendar. It's a tough couple weeks. I mean, March Madness hits in a few. If you like college basketball, I don't know how much in the past DNC have done with college hoops. Last, Very little. Last year we made up uh, some kind of a tournament, didn't the we? The A-hole bracket. We had the A-hole bracket. It's round two of the biggest ass tournament. We'll talk about, you know, if there's a big storyline, you know, with one of the games or some bad call or something Shishefsky like that. goes off or something right. like that. Yeah. But in general, we don't touch it. We don't fake it. We don't act like all of a sudden. You'll read big... the USA Today uh, bios of well, Belmont. and One thing Kirk likes to point out is you got to focus on that 12-5 game because mm. the 12 always beats a 5. Oh, that's huge. So we're going to get into that a little bit. I have a feeling that Keefe's going to be big into the uh, March Madness. <laughs> Kiefer Madness. That'll be a wealth of Kiefer Madness. <laughs> Kiefer Madness? Kiefer Madness? Yes, Kiefer. I'm ready for Kiefer Madness. You're so, right about no, that. Yeah, there's, we're kind of you know looking for things. Oh, we're the ombudsman. You're like fake ombudsman. As Evan Drellick said. We are. Now, you threw out Evan Drellick as a possibility for this Thursday. Is that legit, or you know, how would we do that? We could have him on from Drellick's Fort back on Wednesday. Wednesday's the first, oh. right? He's NHL trade deadline day. All right, it. sorry. Deadline day, also known as the 1st of March. Mm-hmm. Could also be Shat and Kirk as... afternoon. <laughs> that was Kirk at Target. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little bit of a, a fart bubbling, so I figured, okay, I'll squeeze one out and keep running. Not I, successful. I, and I mean covered. So I take a right and go into Target, go into the bathroom, clean up. I'm in there for like 20 minutes. Oh. But I have to finish the run, so I dump the underwear. The shorts are still clean. And I run, and I get so chapped and chafed after a run with sweat and crap and everything. Chad Kirk, yeah, it really was. <laughs> so he's back on Wednesday from uh, Fort Myers. So be Thursday would be a possibility, he, be a quick turnaround. But this is the week of Drellick, so you never know. And Meter's out this week? 
Meters in South Bend. They play Wednesday at 8 o'clock in, um, against Notre Dame. Looking to snap that skid? That 12 game skid? <laughs> hey, or another 20 loss season for the Eagles. Awesome to, <laughs> awesome to see. Boy, what a heartbreaker this is going to be. He's had a few of these this year. God, well, the AD's out. Look, we made just clean I house. was so pissed. We didn't even mention that once. Not pissed at the guys. It just BC's so irrelevant. We suck. They fire their athletic director. Nobody gives a shit. They didn't fire him. He's leaving at the all end right. of his contract. He's, he's joining a consulting firm. All of our <laughs> he's with Gene D. Filippo. All our ex ads are consultants. Dino took an early exit, early retirement. I don't know what you're... some health issues. Yes, sir. So, by the way, I haven't been able to say this because uh, Friday I had to hightail it out of uh, Fort Myers, yeah, to the other the coast. But uh, excellently orchestrated the Dino segment. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That was organized chaos. Was at it its really finest. excellently? It was. I mean. You heard the guys. I have not laughed that hard in my entire life, let alone in radio. I was pissing all over the floor laughing so hard. Okay. Finally, Kirk Minahan's in a good mood. The gang is back together. You've been hoping for months that you and Dino would hook up. <laughs> hey, oh, my friends. Are... Good morning. Oh, Dino. Hello, Dino. <laughs> hey, my <laughs> friends. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dino. How you doing? <laughs> hey, my Jump. friends. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like you have a lot to say. That's fine. That's okay. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Hey, hey, John. Hey, John, relax. Somebody. We were laughing here, too, in the booth. because we, we, we had a plan going into the Dino segment from 8.30 last week. This time, I thought, unlike the Pete Shepard soundboard malfunction, I thought we would have this one pretty ironed out. I mean, we had all our questions ready to go from Dino. I have a question for you. But they threw me the deliberate curveball right out of the gate. Where they had We were Jerry. not supposed to have Jerry <laughs> say hello to Dino. And that's what started the madness, really. Hey, my friends, good morning. I was at a pull and pray stage like Mud at that point, you know? We're in a pull and pray stage. <laughs> oh, it was great. Well, the, the other part was <laughs> Jerry tried to get the, I have a small penis. <laughs> yeah, no, no he, couldn't, he couldn't communicate it to me. He just had to say it blatantly on the air. <laughs> John, why don't you go to the nude beach? I have a small penis. <laughs> That's the same reason I don't know. That seems reasonable. <laughs> He was saying, All I could find was the tide. I, tie. Yeah. <laughs> this is, I know there's some nude beaches around here. Is there a reason you don't go to any of these nude beaches? I tithe. <laughs> <laughs> I hoping for the small penis. Yeah, tithing is, it seems to be a what? real reason for not what? going. Our audio system, we have a lot of shepherd drops. It pales in comparison to the Dino. I mean, you type in <laughs> Dino, and there are just pages and pages, so... <clears throat> It's a uh, it's a full weekends of work going in. I got to recatalog them all, and uh, they're there, but they're just not readily available. You know, no, it's, it was it's just, not that easy. <laughs> the, the best. That was fun. I, though. I don't know why I like it so much, but the, when you just throw in the the socks in society, one. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you when you're talking about general society. But in this particular case, in general society, you can wear your socks anywhere you want them. <laughs> I'm just not expecting that at all. I'm just. Like, and Kirk's like, oh, that's an interesting thing there, Dino. Not really what we're talking about. I know you're rusty. Uh, good work by Aaron, the intern, on that, too. He really helped out. So he's fantastic. Uh, we have had some great interns. Uh, Aaron is Oh, top speaking notch. of which, we have an intern for the summer set up. I was this close to firing him before he even started. He'd send me a question about it. You know, um, what are my duties for this internship? I'd reply. He'd send another question. What time do I come in? I'd reply. <laughs> And I'm sitting, it's Friday afternoon, I'm trying to relax, whatever, weekend started, and I keep getting these fucking one-letter emails, one-question emails, and I said, I gotta go, you're pissing me off. <laughs> Great, so summer could be a struggle? So, summer's gonna be a disaster with this guy from Ithaca College, he's Meter's buddy. Oh, no! So, oh, no, it's, so he's, a, he's a Meter insider. He's a Meter insider, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we've had uh, Connor Hawley and Kyle Deleuze, two fantastic interns. Back to back, and now Aaron, I think, might be even the best of the bunch. I don't know about you. I've got a soft spot for Kyle. Oh, they're all good. They're all great. I think I didn't think it would be possible to match Kyle's dedication and hard work. Aaron is creeping in, and also unspoken is that we gave Kyle all this credit for driving in from Amherst. Yeah, Aaron comes in over an hour away in Rhode Island. Yeah, every day. So five days a week doesn't miss. He he. Kyle is in his sights. I don't want to give him Kyle status yet because Kyle was as good as I think I've ever had, but Aaron is uh, on his way to Kyle's status. Tim Tully was good. Tom Greenberg was good. We've had some really good uh, good run of interns. When these guys leave, you and I are going to be uh, getting shit on because uh, our, our performance will drop off. Absolutely. That's fine. Tomorrow, we think Pete Shepard. That was a semi-booked performance. That was nice of you to throw that in there at the end of the show. Why well, is Shepard in this week? 
Pete's remember? in tomorrow. He is. He is. Yes. Really? Did, you, did Kirk Minahan approve this? I'm not sure. Why'd you book him without asking us first? <laughs> it's not fully booked. I I had him planned for tomorrow. Booked. I mean, it's not fully booked. <laughs> it was, I always end well, don't I? Yeah. No. I said I spoke with Pete uh, via text yesterday to just confirm he'd be free on Tuesday because other people. Like if we needed an Arcan or someone else, that requires more time. Mm-hmm. But now I knew that Pete was able to do it, so I was going to talk with the guys today. Nice. In my text exchange yesterday, I did say Reamer today, Pete tomorrow. You did. But Pete likely. We could. Or we could, we, yeah. right. But anyway, Pete's in tomorrow. That is Kirk confirmed. didn't respond to that, I noticed. He didn't seem to be very interested in. We got a long text exchange between Jerry, you, and me yesterday about yeah. the plan. We got three letters from, from Kirk. M-U-T. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> I with Mutt. <laughs> that was his entire, you know, it, what he it uh, added. To, yeah, it was very passionate. So Mutt will be in Friday. Pete will be in tomorrow, Trenny and Wednesday, and possibly a Drellick appearance on Thursday. All right. Good luck with Pudge. Thank and you. Thanks, Curtis. See you later. See you.